I was lucky enough to be able to be one of the first people to get a Gen 5 drive to daily drive on their system because Crucial wrote me when they did the launch of the Crucial T700 Gen 5 drive, one of the first drives for consumers at a decent price which you could get. And it's also the reason why I got an MSI X670P motherboard and it's also the reason why I got on AM5 at the time. We are talking around three years ago. Now Gen 5 drives are incredibly fast and they made a massive difference in my day-to-day -day productivity life, making videos, exporting videos, moving around large files. They are a lot faster than Gen 4. We are talking nearly double, around 12 gigabytes per second, the previous Gen, Gen 5 drives. However, that has not been without issues. Now, I have a very well ventilated build in a high 2i60 filled out with fans. We have more than 10 fans and the motherboard has a dedicated Gen 5 heatsink, passive heatsink. This was the heatsink in my motherboard and the drive was always running a bit too hot because if the GPU was rendering and we were exporting a video, it could go as high as 80 degrees. And now, after around two years of very intensive usage, drive health has already deteriorated a bit. So I was very excited to see that someone else finally launched something different. And that is Team Group with this thing. Now, when I saw it, I couldn't believe this was a real thing and I was super excited. Now, this is their Team Group T-Force. GE Pro. And what this is, is a next gen Gen 5 drive. Now I got the 4 terabyte version because I wanted to upgrade in space also and because I wanted to see what the best performance could be. But they make it in 1 terabyte and 2 terabyte version too. I think the 2 terabyte is the sweet spot for most people. But the cool thing, drive aside, which uh, again, new technology, it has a 3D NAND and it finally goes to 14 gigabytes per second. So double the speed of Gen 4. The cool thing is the heatsink. Now take a look at this thing, okay? It looks like it's out of the movie, or if you've been in tech for a while, it looks like something out of older tech from around 2010, when we had X58 with all those little fans on the VRAM, on the RAM, on the chipsets, and uh, it looks very cool. But the thing is, we do need an active fan on our Gen 5 heatsink. We need it. And we also need a better heatsink. Now this thing is crazy. Four heat pipes, it's basically like a low-end CPU cooler on a drive because nowadays drives are little computers. They have a controller, they have storage, they have flash, they have basically a RAM. So it's only right we cool it as if it was a little CPU. Am I right? I installed this on my main PC and I had to get rid of the stock heatsink, but I wasn't sad about it because the weight itself, the new one, is a lot better. It comes pre-mounted, they give you a little screwdriver and it slots in in any space, no matter your motherboard. You plug it in and I decided to just quickly run a test. And this thing goes exactly as fast as it promises. 14 gigabytes per second and I did the test after cloning my OS on the new drive. So I did not do a fresh install. We had the drive half filled up because I didn't want to test it in best case scenario. I wanted to test it in real world performance. I tested it with closed glass in my system with a 3090, which puts out a lot of heat and with all the fans set to be very quiet. I also went in the BIOS and set the fan of the heatsink itself to a, an actual low RPM because if you set this one high, it can actually be quite noisy if you max it out, but you can map it to follow your drive's temperature. So it actually rises with load. That's what you should do. Or you can just put a static fan speed, which you're comfortable with, which you will not hear, which is what I've done because I really care about uh, having low noise uh, since the PC is very close to me. And uh, I, I don't know, I guess I'm a little bit noise sensitive. It's why I have Arctic fans in all of my systems. Temperature was also very good. It was about 15 to 20 degrees lower than my previous Crucial drive with a stock heatsink while going quite a lot faster. We're talking two gigabytes per second faster. Like that two gigabytes difference alone is pretty much the speed of a Gen 3 drive. And it's four times the speed of a SATA SSD. This thing, is crazy fast. Now, did I see difference in real world performance? Because it's easy to run tests. You can find tests anywhere, but I think people don't test enough stuff for real world usage. And truth is, if I am, for example, unpacking a file or if I am doing something short, I could not notice the actual two gigabytes per second difference. Even though if you're extracting a very large zip file, you will do it in around 20% less time, which is pretty good. But I actually saw the difference in uh, 
real world productivity usage. So PC is actually faster when I am exporting stuff because the drive doesn't throttle. The thing is the previous drive was throttling. It couldn't handle uh, 12 gigabytes per second speed all the time on a stock heatsink. This thing never throttles because it has a fan, so it cannot throttle because it's fully cooled. And uh, trust me, the heatsink gets pretty hot, so it's working. It's definitely pushing out more heat, but it's doing very well. Now, the cool thing is the pricing. So this is an expensive piece of hardware. It's high-end stuff. You should not buy this if you are on any kind of real world budget but if you're building a high-end productivity system and you want this as your main drive i think it's a good buy especially because uh, there is just very small little to no difference for the actual actively cooled version now if you're buying one of the latest uh, z890 or x870e for example a rogue Strix motherboard with a very large heatsink because people of course realized that we had a problem with the first gen gen 5 drives then you can buy their graphene cooled standard Team Group T4's GE Pro drive. You don't have to get the Airflow version, which is this one. However, if you have a standard motherboard, uh, or if you want to get still better performance than regular one, you can get this one, which is what I would actually recommend. And it's not too far off from what Crucial is asking for their drives. So we are talking like 50 bucks of price premium, and I think it's worth it because you're getting the extra speed. And even compared to the new Crucial T705, this is a better choice. So honestly, no brainer. This is the best. NVMe drive Gen 5 on the market right now as I'm speaking in early 2025 and uh, yes if you're the kind of target audience for this like I am I think it's worth the buy and I will be daily driving it from now on you will see it in my build so it also looks pretty cool if you ask me mounted you guys let me know what you think about it if you think it's useless if you think it's a good buy and if you are going to get one or if you have a Gen 5 drive let me know if you put more heat sinks on top of it or even a fan to keep it cool and see you guys in the next video bye bye